Thank you for the privilege of the podium. I have no relevant disclosures, but I am a member of the SAGES SMART Committee, the Quality Outcomes and Safety Committee, and the OPOI Task Force, all of which are working on this with your help. There's an opioid crisis in the United States, and it's getting worse. Opioid prescription overdoses are more than 100 a day, and the deaths are more than car accidents, guns, and heroin and cocaine combined. Plus, there's issues of misuse, abuse, diversion, and more than $500 billion in costs annually that go towards the opioid crisis. The inpatient surgical episode is a gateway for the opioid naive patient. During the inpatient stay, almost 20% of patients have opioid-related adverse events, which increase complications, length of stay, and total cost of care. And then after discharge, the issues of persistent use, abuse, diversion, and forays into other drugs, such as heroin and cocaine, can start from this. Current estimates are that almost 100% of patients receive opioids in the hospital after surgery, that at least one in 15 goes on to persistent abuse, and 80% of heroin abusers have started with prescription pain medications. We contributed to this. We had an emphasis on linking pain to patient satisfaction and reimbursement to pain scores, and earlier beliefs that there was no addiction potential from opioid use. And what's resulted from this is the current state where there's enough prescription opioid medications to supply every American country with at least 40 tablets. There are strategies to address the issue that exist, enhance recovery programs with a focus on minimally invasive surgical approaches, and opioid sparing pain medications are a tool to address the issue. But in our current state, opioids are ubiquitous, and despite knowing the benefits of minimally invasive surgery, Lapros uh, laparoscopic colorectal surgery is underutilized, and then there's been little study on the role of the surgical approach and what this could have is an impact on the opioid crisis. So our goal here was to evaluate the current state of opioid utilization and its impact on quality measures and costs in both open and laparoscopic colorectal surgery. Our hypothesis was that increasing laparoscopic colorectal surgery is a value proposition that could actually improve patient outcomes and reduce opioid use and its related costs. To do this, we performed a review of the premier database for colorectal cases performed from 2014 through the third quarter of 2015. Cases were stratified into laparoscopic and open approaches, and then opioid and opioid-free groups within each approach. Our main outcome measures were an overview of the current use of opioids by approach, the outcomes and costs by opioid status within each surgical approach, and the factors associated with opioid use, as well as the impact of opioid use and the surgical approach on quality metrics and total costs. To do this, um, the fields evaluated we used were surgical approach, patient and hospital demographics, opioid utilizations in morphine equivalent doses, quality metrics were length of stay, complications, readmissions, and then total cost of care for the inpatient anger episode. We used univariate analysis to compare the demographics, opioid use, quality outcomes, and costs across each platform, GE multivariable models for inpatient cost difference and length of stay, and then a multivariate logistic regression for the adjusted odds ratios of opioid use and platform on our quality measures and costs. This was adjusted. What we found is that there were almost, uh, there were just over 50,000 cases performed during the time period. Approximately 40% of these cases were laparoscopic and about 60% were open. In the laparoscopic approach, 6.6% .6 of patients were opioid free. In the open approach, 5.3% were opioid free. Of note, 2.3% of the laparoscopic patients and 4.8% of the open patients had pre-existing opioid use. Looking at the patient demographics, in both the laparoscopic and open cohorts, the oldest patients, those greater than 65, were significantly more likely to be opioid free. Patients with comorbidities of obesity and cancer in both groups were more likely to receive opioids. 
at the hospital demographics in both the open and laparoscopic approaches. Medicare patients, those in the smallest and largest hospital systems, and those in the Midwest region were most likely to be opioid free. And in the laparoscopic group alone, teaching hospitals were most likely to be opioid free. In both the laparoscopic and open groups, opioid free patients had lower lengths of stay, lower complication rates, more discharges directly to home without post-discharge nursing needs, and lower total costs. Readmission rates were also lower, but this didn't reach significance in either group. In opioid users, the laparoscopic approach had significantly lower daily opioid doses, total opioid doses, and less total days on opioid medications. And then looking at surgical approaches from the MVA model, it was proven to be a, an independently significant factor. Open cases were 18% more likely to use opioids than laparoscopic cases. So pulling this back into a multivariable model, in the adjustments, opioid patients were significantly more likely to have higher costs, to have longer lengths of stay, higher readmission, and complication rates. When looking by approach, open patients had significantly higher costs, longer lengths of stay, higher readmission rates, and higher complication rates. So there's great potential with a synergy between the two. There's limitations from the data source. Um, there's limited detail from this um, on the design. There's limitations with biases that we have to consider, the possibility for coding errors, especially as we pulled each medication specifically for doses. We relied on patient self-reports of chronic pain medication and chronic pain syndromes for pre-existing opioid uses. But despite any limitations, this representative sample still shows that opioid-free colectomy is possible and that there's wide-reaching quality benefits from it. So in conclusion, opioid-free colectomy occurs currently in a small percent of cases in the United States. These patients have shorter lengths of stay, lower complications, lower costs, and less use of post-discharge nursing facilities. When opioids are used, um, laparoscopy has lower daily and total doses and fewer days on opioids. And surgical approach is independently associated with opioid use, with open cases 20% more likely to use opioids than laparoscopic cases. This all has clinical implications as we all look towards value. There's a value proposition in pairing the two together and creating a synergy, and the improvement in each alone um, could have a greater impact together. So something to consider. Thank you. Yeah.